2004 Nissan Altima with a no crank and um, checking the starter circuit. First check I'm doing is on the heavy positive post on the starter, which is hot all the time. Got my voltmeter negatively connected to battery negative, and we have a reading of 12.07 volts. This is not a good test, it's not loaded. Uh, we need to crank it to make sure that we have uh, good voltage. Uh, go ahead and crank it and hold it in the crank position. Are you in it? Yes. All right, so we are in the crank position. We have a good 12 volt feed. That means our heavy gauge wire is good. Next test, smaller gauge wire. All right, next test is on the smaller gauge wire. This is the control wire. This will be hot only in the crank position. Same uh, connections, battery negative with the black lead, but, uh, positive lead to the small gauge solenoid wire. With just the key on, I'm reading 8.3 volts. That is not good, that shouldn't be there. Turn the key off. With the key off, I got zero volts. That's That would be normal. Go ahead and crank it, hold it in the crank position. That's in the crank position, got 11.9 volts. That's a good feed. There is nothing wrong with both power feeds to this starter. So the next thing you wanna do is check the starter ground, which is looking like we have a ground problem, especially with just the key on reading eight volts on the solenoid. So I'm gonna show you the ground test next. Okay, I've just I've just picked uh, a metal part of the block. I'm right next to the thermostat housing on a metal bracket with my positive lead. Again, my black negative leads connected to battery negative. So basically what we're doing is a ground to ground voltage drop test and with the key on, I'm reading eight volts on this block. Turn the key off. Key's off, there's no load on the circuit anywhere. No wire is going to ground to the block, so of course my voltage looks good. This is why you need to load the circuit when you do voltage drop testing. Go ahead and crank it. Let's watch the block voltage when you're cranking. There we go, block ground voltage has 11.6 volts on the block. This car has a bad block ground. Show you one more test on this block using a test light. Got test light connected to battery negative. See when I touch positive test light lights. Go to the block, of course the test light's not gonna light, right? Go ahead and crank it. Crank it, Pete. Crank it, all right, good. You see the block is lit. That's going battery negative to the block. That test light is lighting. Go ahead, let off the crank position. It's still lit even with the key in the on position. That test light's still lit. Again, bad block ground. Uh, that ground is located. See if I can show you. That ground is located under the battery right there. And what I'm going to do is grab that and wiggle it right there. It looks green and corroded. And uh, I'm going to grab that and wiggle it and see if I can get this engine to start. Really what this needs is that wire needs to come off and that needs to be cleaned off real good and put back together. But I'm going to wiggle it and see if we can get the car to start. Alright, while I was wiggling the connector, see if I can show this. Found the cable's actually broken. Kind of hard to get the light on this. All right, on the wiggle test, I found that the negative cable is actually broken off on the eyelet. So there you go, bad block ground causing a no crank condition.